Hello and welcome to a rather exciting video. The postman, or rather DHL this morning, brought me this. So this is the prototype version of the AFF board game, Dark Dungeons. I've been talking about this a bit recently and I've been really, really, really excited to um, get this. And I thought I would go through what's in it with you. So this is the prototype. Looks absolutely fantastic. The box looks amazing. The artists have done a cracking job. Now, there are a couple of bits missing from this. This is the prototype. So there are a couple of bits that are not quite finished, but I will get to those. So in the box, lots of bits. And as one of my friends said, people love to open a box and see lots of bits. So first thing we've got, game tiles. Got passageways, T junctions, that one with the rock fall. Uh, we've got rooms, uh, a locked room, uh, a room with uh, a crevasse, etc. So we've got lots and lots of dungeon tiles. Now, the fact that there's so many and you won't uh, there will be lots of games you'll play where you actually won't get through all the dungeon tiles. What that means is every game will be different. So we've got a nice big pile of dungeon tiles there. Okay. Which look great. Now the rest of it is obviously in black and white. And as I've, I've talked about before on previous videos and on social media, we wanted to go for a very classic um uh feel to the game so we've got let's move some some bags out of the way uh some boss cards a couple of boss cards that was the warlock we've also got some ability cards now these are special abilities if you've played aff these are effectively talents so we've got some wizard cards and this one for example is learned so you start with more spells and there are nine of those for the uh, magical characters down there then we've got our warrior cards okay so the warrior cards have various warrior related special abilities. We've got Berserk and Armor Master and Speedy and Tough and Fast Healer and so on. So every uh, character, every hero you play in the game will have a different ability. Now we've also got the dungeon um, condition cards. So these are things like Null Magic, Crumbling, Slimy, Miasma, um, uh, Well Lit, etc. What these do is these apply effectively a global modifier to the whole dungeon for that game. And again, there's nine of these. So you might well play through a dungeon that's slimy and that will change how you play because you can't run as fast and so on. But if you then play um, with Miasma, poison lasts longer and so on. So that, again, affects how you play. So we've got the condition cards and the hero equivalent, which are the ability cards. So they change how the game plays for a given dungeon, for a given uh, hero. We've then got the spell cards. And again, there's quite a lot of these. Uh, there are priest spells, like Banish, um, and there are wizard spells, like Armour. And so when you play, you select some of these. Now, some games, you might want to randomly select them. If, for example, you're playing the wizard character, you might want to play two or three solo games where you select a random selection of spells and see how you get on now they also are then used for scrolls after the start of the game next treasure cards 
treasure symbol. And so we've got mundane uh, treasures like the crown that are worth treasure tokens. Bag of gold. Um, and we've got other things um, in here, uh, all sorts of bits and pieces that are, there's magic items, there's items like cheese that can affect the mouse, there's um, special items that only affect particular enemies, so there's things like holy water, there's things like um, the bell of banishment to get rid of demons. So we've got all of those as well. And then lastly, these are in two bags because it's too many to fit in one, we've got the adventure cards. So there's a nice big pile of these. Let's take them out. So we put them all together. Okay, nice big pile of these. Now these are double-sided. So what that means is you will have a cover card. It's in here somewhere. And you might um, draw your top card and it is, say, giant rat. So you will then have, with the giant rat, you have the opportunity to fight it, to uh, run away, to um, try and sneak past or do something else. And if you have some cheese, fantastic, you can get past the giant rat. And there's also empty rooms, there's portals, there's chairs where you can sit and he, uh, eat provisions. Um, there's uh, empty rooms, there's chests and so on. And, and as you can see, we've gone for the classic black and white art and it looks absolutely superb. And again, there's a lot more of these than you can get through in a single game, which means that um, if you play it two or three times on the trot, every game will be very different. And you will notice that whether it's the tiles, whether it's the treasure cards, whether it's the um, ability cards, whether it's the adventure cards, they all look fantastic. They're black and white, but they look classic. They look fighting fantasy. And that's the thing I really, really wanted with this game. From the box to the cards, to all the components, I wanted this to feel like fighting fantasy. And that was really, really, really important. Now we've got the tokens. I think I'm probably gonna end up making these a bit bigger for the final game. Um, but we've got various tokens. So we've got provisions and we've got um, blessings and curses. Uh, we've got uh, what's in there, plus ones and plus twos for when you get better. Uh, we've got um, treasure, we've got magic, um, oh, the treasure, what are those? No, we've got stamina, um, we've got uh, poison, um, and we've got unlock tokens because some of the rooms, uh, like these, have a lock. So to get through that door, you need to unlock it. Once you've unlocked it, you put a little unlock token on. So there's a whole load of tokens in there. And they make keeping track of the game easy because you can just put the, the tokens out. We've got some dice. And then we've got our heroes. So the hero sheets look like this. So we've got, we've got dwarf, rogue, wizard, etc. Now, these obviously strongly evoke the... Um, fighting fantasy uh, carriage sheet that you would get in one of the game books. Very familiar, we've still got skill, stamina, luck. Um, obviously the dwarf doesn't have magic, the wizard does. The dwarf doesn't have manager, uh, mana, the wizard does. The dwarf however has armor. There's a space for bless and curse, space for poison tokens. We could put our provisions tokens down here, special abilities. And of course, if the dwarf then finds the crown, we've got space for our inventory. And so there are eight heroes in the box. Now, for the uh, characters actually on the table, we've got these. So if you're the dwarf, got one of these. Okay. So we can put that on that room there. And we wanted to go for these because they are very, very 
easy to set up. And they also evoke, I think, a lot of the feeling um, of a game like Talisman, which obviously provided a lot of inspiration for this game. Talisman, same sort of era as the fighting fantasy game books and so on. So last thing, this is not finished, hence it's a temporary one. We've got a time track. Um, little hourglass token because the game will have three modes all playable with the same components so you can play either as a solo game and again you see you could randomize that you could select one of your random uh heroes and go oh, we'll take this one. Oh, look today i'm the wizard you can then take a random uh magic ability card um you know pluck one out and get um, oh, hang on. No, they're spell cards. So you could do your random spells. You could do a random uh, wizard ability. Uh, you could do a random dungeon. And then there are even going to be rules for random objectives in a solo game. So you might have to kill the boss. You might have to accumulate treasures. You might have to defeat monsters. You might have to explore. And so on. And so you can play the solo game. 10, 20, 30, 40 times, and every single one will be different. Because playing as the learned wizard is different from playing as the tough dwarf. And playing as the tough dwarf in the slimy dungeon is somewhat different to playing as the tough dwarf in the um, miasma dungeon, and so on. And of course, you've got random dungeons themselves, and you've got plenty of adventure cards and plenty of treasures, and your scrolls are going to be random, and, and so on and so forth. So what this means is you can play this 10, 20, 30, 40 times and every time will feel different. And obviously there's also competitive uh, versions or competitive rules. There are uh, collaborative rules. You can play this as a team. And so as far as the components go, I'm absolutely over the moon. It looks incredible. Um, and I just, I did actually put it downstairs in the game room next to a whole pile of other board games have got similar sort of size box and it just fitted in and I can very much see this on the shelves of your game shops even bookshops and toy shops and so on and so forth because this is more than easy enough for, for anyone to play so um, as you can probably tell, I'm really, 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 really excited with how this all looks. Uh, we're still working towards finalising the crowdfunder, sorting out stretch goals, um, pledge levels, uh, fulfilment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But hopefully, very, 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 very soon, um, I will be able to uh, share the pre-launch page. Um, there is a link in the YouTube chat that goes to the web page about this. There is an email sign up there. You can, can put your email address in and um, you can get a weekly update on how this is going. Um, and hopefully before too long, this will be on the shelves and you can buy it and you can play it. And if you are going to fight in Fantasy Fest in a few weeks time, there will I will have this with me there for you to see. Hopefully you're ex as excited about this as I am. And um, uh, I look forward to talking to you more about this.